Hello world, this is Lisa Fredrickson, your friendly professor from Johnson County Community College. And this short screencast is going to go through hands-on project 2-1 at the end of chapter two very thoroughly. Here's our code and what it's doing is accepting a value in this input box. And when I click the convert button, it's converting that temperature to Celsius in this particular element. If I put in 32, convert to Celsius, I'm expecting zero, and that's what I'm getting. This code is in the bottom of the index.htm file, and let's just look at the index.htm file real quickly. I have a nice little form here with three areas, three field sets, and we notice that there's no opening action or method attributes, so this form is not going anywhere. There's no submit button. It's just here to interact with the user and provide this conversion for them. I've got a label for the F value input box and it's inner temp in this symbol Fahrenheit. And that symbol is the degree symbol. And then I've got an input box with a type number, which is giving me this little box here with the spinner control. I've got a button element, which is this button right here, convert to degrees Celsius. And at the end, I've got a paragraph temp in degrees Celsius, and another paragraph with just a non-breaking space in it. So this little element is also a paragraph. Down below, I've got a JavaScript section. I've got a function named convert with one, two, three JavaScript statements in it, and an event listener. But let's just really desugar this and start from the very beginning. And to do that, I'm going to put JavaScript comment symbols around all of my JavaScript to remove that from the equation. Comment Lines are a simple but very powerful way to isolate and debug your code. And so let's say we wanted to do the same thing, but we didn't know about functions yet and we didn't know about event listeners yet. After chapter one, you should know about the onClick event attribute. And in the onClick event attribute, we can run JavaScript. We're going to copy these same statements and just paste them up here in our onClick attribute. And as soon as I put those statements in our onClick attribute, uh, I run into the problem of having multiple quotation marks. So I'm gonna have to remove all those quotation marks in my JavaScript and replace them with apostrophes because of course the quotation marks are already used by the attribute value. We're declaring a variable called degree F and we're setting it to whatever the document.getElementById f value value is. In other words, we're taking the value from this f value box. The f value box is ID'd this input box right here, f value. That's f value. We're declaring a variable called degrees Celsius, degc, and we're setting it equal to the egf, this whole business, minus 32 times 5 ninths. That's the formula to convert. Fahrenheit to Celsius. And then after we've figured out what variable the EGC is equal to, we're going to set document get element by IDC value. That's this paragraph down here. We're going to set its inner HTML value to the EGC. The reason we have to use the inner HTML property is because we're talking about a paragraph. A paragraph does not have a value property. Only an input element has a value property. Input boxes have values. Paragraphs have inner HTML right between the opening and closing paragraph tags. And you know, we wouldn't have to use these variables either. We could sugar this even further by instead of saying DEGF, I could just take this whole business that it's equal to and put it right here. And then I wouldn't even need this first statement. So we'll just delete the var. DEGF statement. And I wouldn't need to even declare this variable either. I could just say, instead of using DEGC over here, I could take this whole statement and just cut it out and put it right there. Here's our least sugared statement. What we're saying is this document get element by IDC value, this guy right here, which is equal to this little white box, your inner HTML property should be set to the value of F value box minus 32 times 5 ninths. Let's save that and refresh my page and see if this works. 212 convert to Celsius 100 degrees. So there in its most primitive form is the JavaScript without using any variables and without using any function names. However, we don't want to do this because it intermixes our JavaScript with our HTML and because we didn't use any variable names, it's hard to read. So we're going to delete that 
JavaScript statement. Instead, we're going to come down here to our function. I'm going to move this comment statement, and I'm just going to comment out my event listener. And we're going to define a function called convert, and we're going to use variables where, because once we declare these variables, then we can use them in different parts of our code. So here's our function. We've called it convert. We know that a function name has to be followed by parentheses. All the statements in the function have to be in closed and curly braces. We're declaring deg f to be the value of f value, the value in this box. We're declaring deg c to be whatever the value in that box is now declared as deg f minus 32 times 5 ninths, which is the formula to convert the Fahrenheit number to the Celsius number. And we are setting the C values, enter HTML, that's this paragraph, value to the EGC, which we just calculated as a Celsius equivalent of that Fahrenheit number. Now, if I wrap those statements with a convert function, now my onClick event is much easier to call. I can just call a convert function. And that, in a nutshell, is why we create functions, to wrap statements with a name that can be called elsewhere in our code. I'm going to save that, refresh, let's see, 32 degrees Fahrenheit, I'm expecting zero Celsius and it still works. However, we can go one better. We can go one better by eliminating all JavaScript. We don't want to put this in our HTML if at all possible. Let's delete all JavaScript from our HTML and let's run that code on an event listener. And that's what the event listener does for you. Document get element by ID button. This is a bad ID because the ID is the same as the element name, so I'm going to change it. So when I get the element by ID C button, I'm going to use the add event listener method, which has three different values. The first value is what event are you listening for? I'm listening for its click event. What function name are you running? I'm going to run the function name convert. The last argument has to do with the order in which the code runs and the default value is false. But the important thing to note here in the event listener statement is we have to get the element that we want to listen for, the C button, the C button, add event listener method, what event are we listening for, click, and notice that click in the JavaScript goes in quotation marks. It's not on click. On click was the event attribute that we used up here in the HTML. But remember, JavaScript and HTML are different languages. So the onClick attribute triggers code on the click event, and the click event in JavaScript also triggers the code. We don't ever put onClick in our event name in our JavaScript. When we reference a function name, we just reference a function name. We don't have to put the left and right parentheses as we did back here in onClick. When we referenced it, we referenced convert left right parentheses semicolon because that's the end of a JavaScript statement. I think that's because we're already using parentheses to surround these arguments. So, so your syntax for your event listener is a little bit different than the syntax for the on-click event in the HTML attribute, but that's okay. It's consistent from here on out. Once you understand that, I'm going to save my web page. I'm going to refresh my converter. And let's see what 50 degrees Fahrenheit is in Celsius. It's 10. If we were to really do this right, we would take all of this JavaScript out, put it in an external file, and refer to that with the SRC and whatever our external JS file was named here, and get this JavaScript out of the script tags in the HTML. But it's included here for convenience sake. Thank you.